the fourth lesson in this series shows you how to handle grid events. In the previous lesson, we learned how to use a click event from a drop-down list to trigger reading a record from the database and populating the form, including a grid, with that data. We also learned how to use the OK button to update the database, the New button to create a new item. In this lesson, we are going to learn how to use the grid Validate Cell and Change Events to manage the grid data. Let's open the order entry program that we developed in the previous lesson in the GUI Designer. We have two problems to solve here. First, the second column in the grid is a drop-down list for the product number we need to supply a list of product numbers for that drop-down. The second problem is that the third and fourth columns are lookup fields which depend on the second column. And the last column is a calculated field which depends on the first and second columns. We are going to need a way to tell when the user changes the quantity in the first column so we can recalculate the extension and a way to know when a different product is selected so we can look up the price and description and recalculate the extension. The grid control probably has more events available than any of the other controls. Besides the typical events like activate and click, there are three cell level events activate cell, validate cell, and deactivate cell and three row level events activate row, validate row, and deactivate row. These cell and row level events work just like the equivalent control level activate, validate, and deactivate events but at the cell or row level. When the user changes data in a cell and moves to a different cell using the cursor keys, the tab key, or the mouse a validate cell event is fired. The same thing happens with validate row if any cell in the row has been changed and the user moves to a different row. Event arguments passed in the GUI args variable indicate the column, row, and new value of the cell or row. The structure of GUI args is described in the programmer's guide and in the online help which was demonstrated in the last lesson. From the problem description, it would appear that we are going to require one or more of the cell level events in our solution. We could use either validate cell or deactivate cell, but validate cell is sufficient and has the advantage of only firing when data changes. There is no need to process the lookup or recalculate unless there is a change. So let's check the validate cell event and go to work on the event handler. Notice that after checking a new event in the properties window, the status bar indicates that we may need to update the event decoder. Let's take care of this now as it is an easy step to miss and is probably the number one reason a program does not function as expected. Before we dive into the grid validate cell handler, let's tackle the first problem, loading the product list. The sample data for this application has only a few product items, which is why we are using a drop-down list for the product column in our grid. The product file is also relatively static, so we are just going to build the product list once at program startup time. Our other startup code is here, so we'll add the code to build the product list here as well.
we are going to load this list into the call items property of the grid and the structure of call items is a subvalue mark delimited list of items a grid drop down list itself can have multiple columns so columns within an item are separated with vertical bars the first column in the item is loaded into the cell when an item is selected the other columns are for display purposes only in this application we are going to use two columns for our product drop-down list items the product number and the product description we will build a sorted list of products by selecting the product file and looping through the items using read next we use the locate statement to sort the list once the list has been built we load it into the call items property of the grid note that we have specified column 2 the product column in the ATGUI set prop argument list now that the easy part is done let's tackle the validate cell event the validate cell event returns the column and row of the cell being validated in GUI args it also returns the new value of that cell but we're probably not going to need that we need to perform an action when data in either of the first two columns is changed we could set up a begin case structure here to handle changes in column one differently from changes in column two which is a legitimate approach however in the case of this particular application we're going to perform the same action either way we need to get the quantity and the product number look up the description the price and calculate the extension it doesn't matter whether data changed in column one or column two we simply check if the column is either one or two and if it is we retrieve the values for all columns in the row note the use of the row argument in the call to AT GUI get prop this indicates we only want data from this specific row and row vals is the variable which we want our data returned in this variable will contain a subvalue for each column in the row in the same format used earlier to populate the grid when we read a record from the orders file we need to update the order total whenever the extension amount of an item changes so before we calculate the new extension for this row we'll subtract the current extension from the order total next we'll extract the new quantity product number then read the description and the price from the product file and calculate the new extension finally we update the row vals variable with the new values for price description and extension and update the grid by calling AT GUI set prop now update the order total and display the new total on the form let's try it out let's save the code compile the code close the window save the project close the window notice how all the calculations and lookups are taking place as we enter our items into the grid but also notice 
that when we select an item from the drop-down list with the just by clicking it with a mouse the lookup does not occur until we move to another field this is how the validate cell event works the event is fired when cell data is changed and the user moves to a different cell in this case simply selecting an item from the product list does not fire the validate cell event with the addition of one more event to the grid we can remedy this situation and process our recalculation when selecting an item For a grid, the change event fires when the user finishes editing a text cell, or chooses an item from a drop-down list, or toggles a checkbox. So let's choose to add the change event to our list of events for this grid. Notice again the event decoder requires updating, so let's do that right away. and go work on our change event. It turns out that the structure of GUI args for the change event with regards to column and row is the same as for the validate cell event. And we basically want to do the same action when a product is selected as we did when we processed the validate cell event. So we can simply use the same routine. and just go sub to the validate cell handler. Let's check it out. We'll save, compile, mm -hmm. close window, save, and close window. this time let's see if we can read the record as soon as we click an item and look at that at this point we have a fully functional order entry application we can read a customer record display the customer name load a list of orders read an order record when an item in the order list is clicked, display, enter, and modify order detail items from a multi-valued data set using a grid, handle calculated fields within the grid, and even create a new order. There are still other enhancements that can be made, like searching for the desired customer or adding comments. Just use your imagination.